As soon as I say that, it's important to remember those definitions are a helpful taxonomy, a kind of ordering, making some distinctions of the kind of different nuances that the word love can have in, in Greek. But if you really want to understand how Paul is defining love here in 1 Corinthians 13, you can't just look at the word agape. You have to look at the actual description of love that he gives in the subsequent verses. Because he's going to define it for you precisely by painting a portrait of what agape is and what it is not. What love is and what it isn't. And um, in, this, in this section, it's really important to recognize that when Paul defines love, although our English translation have um, adjectives, in every case, Paul's actually using a verb. So he's not just telling you what love is like or, or what it is. He's telling you what it does and what it doesn't do. Okay, This is very important because in, again, contemporary English, we tend to think of love primarily as like a feeling or an emotion. But Paul's very clear that love here is an action that chooses to do certain things and chooses not to do other things. So with that basic framework in mind, let's ask, what is agape? That's the Greek. Or Latin, caritas. What is charity? What does charity do? And what does charity not do? Here's what Paul says. Love is patient. Or you can even say, it does patience, right? Love is kind. Or does kindness would be a kind of more concrete, literal translation. Love rejoices. Here we see it more clearly. The verbs are, you can get the verbs in English. It rejoices in the right. It bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. And it never ends. So that's what love is, right? Beautiful there. You can even see some of the virtues kind of flow through of faith and hope, right? Faith. Being it believes all things. So why do I believe everything that God says to me in the scriptures? Ultimately, because I love him. Why do I hope for the good of the resurrection right, and life everlasting in the world to come? Well, because I hope in God, because, because I love him, right? So hope and faith here, Paul is rooting ultimately in agape. Patience, being patient, being kind, right? All those things flow out of agape. Right? Now, what about what love is not? He continues. On the other hand, he says love is not jealous or doesn't do jealousy. I don't do jealousy. Love is not boastful or it doesn't do boasting. It isn't arrogant. It isn't rude. Again, put these in verbs. It doesn't do arrogance. It doesn't do rudeness. Right? It doesn't insist on its own way. There we see willing the good for the other is an act of love, right? Dying to self and choosing the other. Love doesn't insist on its own way. It isn't irritable. It isn't resentful. And it doesn't rejoice in the wrong. So in this parallel, this set of contrasts, right, between what love is and what it isn't, there we see an emerging portrait of what the way of love actually looks like. Right? and what living a life of love looks like. And there was a wonderful book that came out um, on this, Seslau Speak. He was, a, uh, he was a Catholic biblical scholar in the 20th century. He wrote a three-volume work on agape in the New Testament, a classic work on love in the New Testament. And in his book on, on love, he says something interesting. He says, if you want to understand Paul's... Um, kind of portrait of love, one of the things you can do is you can replace the word agape with the name Jesus. And you'll see that what you actually get is a portrait of the life of the Savior. Let me just do this for a second to kind of give you an idea. So Jesus is patient. Jesus is kind. Jesus is not jealous or boastful. He's not arrogant or rude. He doesn't insist on his own way. He's not irritable or resentful. He doesn't rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the right. Jesus bears all things. He believes all things, right? puts his trust in the Father. He hopes all things. He endures all things. Right? What does he endure? 
he endures the cross, right? So you see this powerful portrait of the charity of Christ emerging in Paul's description of agape. It's very similar to the Beatitudes. Some, some scholars, uh, for Benedict, for example, has pointed out that, um, that the Beatitudes are a kind of profile of Jesus himself. The same thing true here with the love chapter, right? It's a kind of profile of the one who is the living love of God made manifest, made in the flesh through the incarnation. Now, that's a beautiful way to kind of reflect and meditate on this passage. However, a, a good friend of mine also gave me another suggestion with this that might be helpful to you, which is to use the same verses in, in uh, St. Paul on, on Agape. And instead of putting Jesus' name in it, put your own name in it as a way of examining your conscience, right? So sometimes it can be uh, easy to examine your conscience, for example, according to the Ten Commandments and come out looking pretty good, right? Like, I haven't committed adultery, haven't murdered anyone, haven't worshipped any cows lately, right? I haven't committed idolatry. Um, I'm looking pretty good. But put your name in Paul's portrait of agape and see how am I doing in terms of my growth in virtue, right? And I hesitate to do this because I'm going I'm I'm to have strike one right at the beginning. Brant is patient. Oh, no. All right. Brant is kind. Brant is not jealous or boastful. Brand is not arrogant or rude. Okay, wow. Now, as soon as you start to do this, you'll see I have a long way to go along the path of love. Has rudeness been rooted out of my life? Has resentfulness been rooted out of my life? Am I patient? Am I kind to others? Do I insist on my own way? Am I irritable? Am I resentful? Am I boastful? Do I rejoice when I see wrongs carried out, when I see other people hurting or in pain or getting what's coming to them. If I do rejoice at the wrong rather than in the right, if I fail to bear all things or believe all things or hope all things or endure all things, guess what? I still have a long way to go on the way of agape, on the way of love.